Okay, uh, so we have talked about um, the normalization rules, so that will reduce, help you reduce the data redundancy, and also decide that how many tables we should have. Uh, we also talked about a different type of the relationships, so that how you can link different tables or different entities together. So the tool that we used in design a relational database to handle the relationships and also to, 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 to design the tables is called the relational, the entity relationship model or the ER model. So the so entity relationship model describes those uh, interrelated things of interest in a specific domain of knowledge. So uh, it has been used widely in relational database design and also it has been used widely in other fields. So it is not used in relational database only. Um, basically, there are two things that in an ER model. Uh, so one is the entity itself. So as I said, such as tables in the relational database or some other stuff in other fields. Um, the second thing that in the ER model is called the relationships. So that how each entities are related together. Uh, so here, let's see one example that in the relational database. So here we have six entities, or the six tables. Customer, they can submit order, and the order will contain normally different products. Okay, and those products can be um, different items and those items are shipped in different through different shipments and those shipments and also those items are uh, supplied or sent by the suppliers okay so here we have six uh, entities and also in the relational database those can be six tables uh, for example on on the customer table each record might represent a single customer, okay? So customer A, B, C, etc. And they can submit different orders. So the relationship between customer and order in this case will be M to M relationship, okay? So because one customer can definitely submit multiple orders and for the same type of order, it can be submitted by multiple customers. So for example, the uh, different customers are buying the same items. Okay. Uh, and an order can contain multiple, one order can contain multiple products. Okay. And one product can be uh, ordered, requested through multiple orders. Okay. So they are also M to M relationship. Okay, so that is an ER model. So um, ER model describes that how the tables are related with each other. So it contain the tables or the entities and normally the table name and also each individual rows and also how they are related with each other. Okay, so um, that is the ER model and also we create a ER diagram that, uh, so for example, like this. Uh, to handle, to design the models. Uh, you may also notice that those relationships, uh, those tiny symbols on those, rela uh, on those relationships uh, are slightly different. So those are called the ER diagram notation. Okay, so there are different type of styles of the ER diagram notation. Um, but here, those are the most commonly used notations. So if you have one single line on the relationship, and if you have one um, slash, uh, it, it represents the one relationship. OK, so on this side, that is one relationship. OK, and if you have an arrow like this, uh, so that represents two uh, many relationships. Okay, so many. Uh, and this one representing, uh, so two lines, two vertical lines representing one, and also there's only one. So that it, it's, it's like unique. Okay. 
So that's like the unique constraints. Okay. And if you have a dot and also vertical line, so that means it can be zero or it can be one. Okay, it can be zero or it can be one. So in this case, the noun is allowed. So the noun is allowed. Is a now is allowed. And also this stands for one or many relationship, and this stands for zero or many relationships. So again, zero means that the noun N U L L is allowed. Okay, now is allowed. All right, so let's see one example. So that is what we are going to do in the lab. So let's say we want to handle uh, the, the, the relationship among teachers, courses, and also students. Okay, teachers, courses, and also students. So we will have a teacher table. We will have a cost table and also we will have a student table. Okay, teacher table, cost table, and our student table. And on the teacher table, so as we did in the last week uh, lab, so we use email as a primary key. Okay, so you can see this golden key icon, so that is primary key, which is character. And we have the teacher name, which is also character. And also we have office, which is also character. And we, ha we also define the size of each column. And we also have the cost table. On the cost table, here we are using cost name as a primary key. Of course, you can use cost ID if you have. Uh, so in this example, I'm using cost name as a primary key because I think cost name will be unique. So I just ignore the multiple sessions. Uh, at the data type is character. Uh, the field length, the size is 100 characters. And also I have the cost room information, which is also a character. And I have teacher's email information. So that is the instructor information, which is character. And also that is same data size. And also same data type and also same data size. And this one is a foreign key. Okay, the teacher email on the cost table is a foreign key, so we can see it has a this key icon, but it's a foreign key that refers to the primary key on the teacher's table. Okay, and here we can also see the relationship between those two tables. It is one to many relationship, or specific, it is one to many relationship. Okay, and also it is zero or many. Okay, zero or many. So that means one teacher can teach zero courses or many courses. So that is allowed one or zero or many courses. But one course must have one and only one teacher. Okay, each single course can, ha can only have one um, teacher. Okay, so that's in one table. Um, and then let's see the course table and our student table. So for student table, we use email still as a primary key on the student table. And we have student name and also their major. Okay. And as I said, so student and our course table will be many to many relationship. And however, we cannot handle that many to many relationship directly. So that's why we have our third table, which is enroll table. And on the enroll table, the student email and also course name together will serve as a primary key. OK. Again, it doesn't mean that the two columns are separate primary keys. It doesn't mean that enroll table has two primary keys. Still, there's one primary key. OK. but uh, that primary key has two columns. And then we use cost name as foreign key that link to the cost table. And student email as foreign key link to the student table. So the relationship uh, between enroll list and our student table will be that one student can enroll multiple courses and one course can have multiple students. 
Okay, so the enroll list and the student will be manning to one relationship. The enroll table and the cost table will also be manning to one relationship. However, the cost table and the student table in this case will be manning to manning relationship. Okay, so will be manning to manning relationship. 